Um, you know, we find that, um, you know, our, our customers are not just running one Kubernetes cluster. They're typically managing fleets of Kubernetes clusters. And so Portworks has this ability from day one to be able to migrate and move and replicate data across clusters, not just, not just within a cluster. Um, if you're running your Kubernetes clusters within a single data center or within Metro distance, you can stretch the Portworks cluster to provide storage for multiple Kubernetes clusters. What this allows you to do is, are things like blue-green deployments, or if, a, if one data center goes down, immediately fail over with an RPO of zero to your secondary data center. Um, you could also use this technology to asynchronously replicate data across uh, data centers. We have a lot of users that um, are run an on-prem data center and can asynchronously replicate data to the public cloud. All right, so over here, I'm running two Kubernetes clusters. On the right-hand side, I'm running an um, OpenShift, a single master, three worker nodes, and in the left-hand side, I'm running in the public cloud, which is GKE. Um, let's go ahead and see what's running in my on-prem data center uh, in OpenShift. It's, a, it's identical to the previous demo that I showed where I have a um, Postgres um, container that is backed by a Portworx volume. So nothing fancy, just a single Portworx container backed by, uh, sorry, Postgres container backed by a Portworx volume. I mentioned Stork, which provides Kubernetes with application intelligence, but uh, it also lets you do multi-cluster federated data management. So the first thing to do that, what you need to do is get this cluster pairing certificate. And I go over to GKE and I copy that into my target cluster. And uh, I'm going to over here ask Stork to pair itself with my on-prem cluster. There's a couple of ports that need to be open. Um, and at this point now, my Google public cloud has been synchronized with my on-prem cluster. So in order to show you this functionality, the most basic thing that I do in this demo is I ask Stork to migrate my Postgres database. What it's going to do is take an application consistent snapshot and start migrating that over. So let's see what's going on in Google. Um, it is synchronizing and now it is 100% in sync. A few things that I wanna show you here. Not only does it move the data over, but it recreates all of the necessary Kubernetes objects to run that data. So it had to recreate a PVC. It had to create the storage class. It also uh, recreated the container image. So if I look here, I have a Postgres database now running in Google. And if I log into the Postgres database, you can see here that I have my um, 5 million records all transferred over. So with the matter of a single command, I can take my data, but not just the data, the entire application. And remember that what is an application in Kubernetes? It's not just your container and data. There's all of these Kubernetes um, uh, uh, objects associated with it. Things like load balancer, ingress controller, custom uh, CRDs, secrets, um, so, uh, and, and the, obviously the container image itself, all of that needs to be holistically handled. The other thing I can do is because this is aware of Kubernetes, I could just right from Google say, tell me everything that's running in Eric's namespace in uh, on-prem. And it'll say, Eric is running these five applications. And I can ask Stork to wholesale migrate the entirety of um, Eric's namespace from on-prem to the public cloud. It will start taking snapshots of the various applications and start moving them over. You synced from one, one location to another, but it also included the applications. Is the, is, are the applications in which, and I may have missed this, are the applications in which you're syncing over based on namespace, based on usage of the PVC or, or, or anything like that? Great question. So it is, it, you can do it based on namespace. You could, although I don't really know that people are doing this, get down to a specific container as well if you want to. Uh, but typically, see, in my uh, demo, I just did it by hand. I used Stork to say, um, um, you know, on demand, migrate this application. Normally, people have backup schedules or migration schedules set up ahead of time. So it's a little bit more automated in a real environment than what I showed, if that was your question. Um, you know, as an example, if somebody has, you know, three, I'm uh, making an example of three, let's say that three Kubernetes clusters, um, and they wanted it to be backed up to the public cloud for DR purposes, they would set up a backup schedule and maybe something like every 15 minutes, make sure that my clusters are backed up and synchronized to my target backup cluster. Um, they could do that. Um, the target location, by the way, doesn't have to be a live cluster. It could be just an object store. 
And so people in the public cloud will just use, for example, S3. I have a related question, which is how many different kinds of data stores or applications is this aware of? Like you did a Postgres database there, but I, mean, yeah. I, I imagine there's some magic behind the scenes that knows how to deal with either like the wall files or the blocks or something. Yep. Yeah, uh, no, great question, Calvin. So out of the gate, Stork knows about the most common applications that we've seen people run, the, you know, your basic usual suspects like Cassandra, Postgres, Elastic, and, you know, they're the usual suspects. But uh, it is meant to be extensible. Um, if you, again, go to the Stork Projects uh, uh, webpage, you can see some information on there. A lot of times, uh, you know, we don't know about the application that somebody's running. An example, actually, uh, we're Portworks is a, you know IBM is a partner of Portworks and IBM has this um, this uh, uh, product called CloudPack. You may be familiar with it. CloudPack is fully based on OpenShift, and IBM uses Portworks as the default storage provider under the hood for CloudPack. Anyway, the point behind that story is we didn't know that DB2 was a popular application uh, to run in Kubernetes. We hadn't supported DB2. Uh, Stork has this notion of pre and post hooks, so you can dynamic, you can augment it and give it the um, uh, you know the specific command that needs to be run in the container. Um, and so, if we don't know about it, not a problem. Stork can be told what to do. 